Iran is located in the eastern portion of the Middle East, bordering Iraq, Turkey, Caucasus, Central Asia, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. It is a country where the Sharia law prevails and which is isolated from the rest of the international community via the sanctions and military pressure. The Islamic Revolution of 1979 led to the toppling of the US-supported Shah government and the replacement of it by a theocratic regime of Ayatollahs, which aims to export the Islamic Revolution to other countries. Nevertheless, it is Iran's geography that both forced it to become a strong regional power and also represents the limits to its might. This is Geography and Economics and thank you for watching. Iran's most unsafe and unstable frontier is its border with Iraq. Most of the threats for Iran usually came through these lands, be it the Ottomans, British, the Iraqis themselves or the Americans. For example, the Persian Empire has fought the Ottoman Turkey for nine times, and of course the Anglo-Persian War of 1856 and the 1941 Anglo-Soviet invasion of Iran should not be forgotten. The most recent instance of this, however, was the war with Iraq in the 80s. During this war, Iran lost suffering severe casualties. The Iraq-Iran war has happened because both Iraq and Iran were strong military powers. Both had ideologically opposite governments. Iran is a Shia theocracy, while Iraq was a secular dictatorship. In addition to that, both shared a border with each other. This was one of a hell of a recipe for disaster. And so the disaster happened. On September 22, 1980, the Iraqi Air Force launched surprise airstrikes on 10 Iranian airfields, with the aim of destroying the Iranian Air Force. Nevertheless, the airstrikes were not very successful. The Iraqis managed to destroy only a part of the Iranian airbase infrastructure. However, the majority of the aircraft was not destroyed. The next day, Iraq launched a ground invasion along the frontier measuring 644 kilometers in three simultaneous attacks. Saddam Hussein hoped that the invasion would cripple the Humanist movement and prevent him from exporting the Islamic Revolution into Iraq and other Persian Gulf states. The war lasted for eight years and ended with an Iraqi victory. Therefore, when the US invaded Iraq in 2003, the Iranians supported the US invasion with the intelligence information. However, the Iranians quickly understood that they just have exchanged one threat for another since the United States continued to pressure the Iranian regime after occupation of Iraq. However, during this period, Iranians established close ties with the Shia government of Iraq, who, even though resented the Iranians, still resented the Americans even more. After the US withdrawal in 2011, Iran de facto dominated the Iraqi political space. The reason? The Iranians supported a Shia government in Baghdad is simple. They needed a buffer zone to protect their western border. Essentially, they went as far as to deepen their relations with the Assad regime in Syria. When the Islamic State was established in Iraq and Syria in 2014, the Iranian regime saw it as a direct threat to itself. Therefore, it went with its military and proxy forces to destroy the ISIS and even went as far as to establish an alliance with the Americans via the 2015 nuclear agreement. By the time the ISIS was defeated in 2018, Iranians' sphere of influence stretched all the way through Iraq into the Mediterranean. Iraq is currently divided amongst the pro-Iranian forces and the Assad's success in Syria has largely happened thanks to the Iranian support. In the neighboring Lebanon, pro-Iranian Hezbollah has come to be dominating the government. This is modern Iran's peak of power. Iran has secured all of its western border. One of the main reasons why Iran went into Iraq and Syria to secure its borders is that the Iranians don't really have anywhere else to expand. The Caucasus and Central Asia in the north are dominated by Russia. Afghanistan is unmanageable, even the Soviet Union and the United States couldn't control it, and Pakistan is just too big for Iran. 
Therefore, the only direction the Iranians could go was its western border. And of course, forgetting about the Kurdish issue would be a mistake. An independent Kurdish state in Iraq could create the instability in the Kurdish populated Iranian northwest. Therefore, Iran wants to manage the situation in Iraq to manage this threat. Other than its geography, Iran is also limited by the pressure from the Arabian monarchies and the United States. Firstly, the Saudis and other principalities on the Arabian Peninsula view Iran as a military threat because of its presence in both Iraq and Syria. If the Iranians would establish an absolute military dominance over Iraq, they would be able to threaten the Saudi control over the oil-rich Shia province of Gatif. This is why the Saudis, as well as other monarchies of the Arabian Peninsula, oppose the Iranian influence in the region. I have already talked about the US interest and strategies in the video on the United States. Nevertheless, it is worth mentioning it here briefly. The United States is interested in preventing the emergence of the regional hegemons because since a hegemony isn't threatened by anyone on the land, it can focus its military expenditure on creating a strong navy to protect its maritime interests, and thus it would threaten the US control over the seas, which is the foundation of the American power. So here, Iran has become a strong regional power. Therefore, the United States is trying to block Iran and prevent it from challenging the US in the Persian Gulf. And in order to achieve that, the United States uses sanctions and supports the governments of Iraq, Israel and Saudi Arabia. Thus, Washington hopes to weaken the Iranian regime and force it to focus its resources on sustaining and protecting its regional influence, rather than establishing control over the exports of oil from the Middle East. The place of secondary interest to Iran, though, is the Caucasus. Historically, Iran has dominated this mountainous region, and there is a geographical reason to that. Iran's northern portion is called the South Azerbaijan, and is ethnically dominated by the Azerbaijani people, many of whom retain their ties with their relatives in the independent Azerbaijan. Just as the Kurdish state in the Middle East threatens the Iranian or Turkish control over their Kurdish populated regions, so does an independent Azerbaijan threaten the Iranian control over the southern Azerbaijan. Iran wants to make sure that the Iranian Azerbaijanis won't try to gain independence or join their northern brothers. This is why Iran also supports Armenia in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Besides that, the foreign powers didn't really give Iran a chance to relax on this front either. The Persians fought Russians in this region on multiple occasions since the mid-17th century. Hence, it were the Russians to whom the Iranians ceded the control over the Caucasus. The treaties of Turkmenchai and Gulistan finalized this process. In addition, in the August 1941, the Soviet Union, together with the Britain, invaded Iran from all sides. The British came through the Persian Gulf and India, while the Russians came from the Caucasus and the Central Asia. This event once again emphasized Iranian need for a strong buffer space to protect not only its western border, but also the border with the Caucasus. However, currently, the Iranian options in the Caucasus are limited because the region is dominated by the Russians, who retain the strong influence over the region. And because Iran does not want to spoil its relations with Russia, one of the few great powers which supports Iran. To conclude, Iran has come a long way since the revolution of 1979. Despite the international pressure and hard access to the foreign capital, Iran has extended its influence across the region into the Iraq, Syria and Lebanon. However, Iran cannot project its power north, since it would spoil its relations with one of its few allies, Russia. And it can't really go into Afghanistan, because it is impossible to manage Afghanistan, as both the US and Soviet examples showed us. Despite all of that, the Iranian regime must sustain its regional influence while observing the US and Russia closely and managing its control over its diverse population.